Hi, my name is Sofia Soria, and today I'm going to be talking about my article through a rhetorical standpoint. The article that I chose was published on the Vice website on March 17th, 2017, and it was written by Ana Cordera Rado, and it was titled, How Do We Stop Drug Deaths at Festivals? A brief summary of the article would be that in the United States, there is a lot of drug taking at EDM festivals because of the culture that comes along with it. Because of this, many people are taboo about the subject. The way that she addresses it is very efficient and throughout the whole entire article you can see that she does it in a very professional standpoint. The first thing that you see when you enter the article is the ginormous bold title. It says, how do we stop drug deaths at festivals? Right under it is the subtitle, which says, America's drug policies have been putting ravers at risk for years, but there are signs that the way that we think about drug and raves is shifting. Basically, this gives you an idea of what is going to come along in the rest of the article, and it does it very well by showing it in a ginormous bold text. The first thing that the writer chooses to give you right under the subtitle is real life experience. Through this, it's a big load of pathos because it talks about a man losing his good friend to drug abuse because he had no idea what he was taking. It's something that's very relatable to the article and it really foreshadows what she's going to talk about later. In this real life experience that the writer is talking about, she intentionally leaves out details to really keep the reader going. She later goes on to mention the fact that the person that she's talking about in this real life experience, his friend actually passes away, which is also a great deal of pathos that kind of gives you a real idea of what's going on with this drug issue. In the next few paragraphs after this real life experience, the writer begins to talk about the rave culture and the reputation that it gets because of all the deaths and issues and injuries that people have had over the years. The writer does a great job at including hyperlinks and reliable resources to assure that the reader is truly understanding what she's saying. Another thing that the writer does is mention an array of organizations throughout the article that are made to help people in distress in these really bad situations. She also does the same with laws and acts that are passed to keep people safe in uh, these festivals. And by doing this, she's able to provide the reader with a much better idea on how these issues are being approached. A few examples of these organizations and laws would be the Conscious Crew, the Rape Act, Dance Safe, Music Safety Summit, the Good Samaritan Laws in Washington, and Drug Policy Alliance. Another great thing that the writer does is that she has a really great organization throughout her entire article. There are many sections where she clearly puts together and foreshadows different sections. But what the writer does is that she begins to set up topics that she will later begin to talk about in the rest of the article, making it very put together. She begins to show information that many people wouldn't realize or that they just don't know. For example, one of the things that she mentions is that now promoters are offering amnesty boxes, which are allowing people to give up their drugs before they actually enter a rave or before they enter a festival. In another quote, that she mentions in the article, Woolridge, which is a person that she chose to include, says that banning EDM concerts will only make drug taking more risky by pushing it underground. Not many people think about the consequences that can actually happen if bans go through to get rid of these concerts. Another thing that she mentions is that if ravers know that there will be police and drug sniffing dogs at festivals, they will usually take many drugs before they get into the actual concert instead of taking them while they're there. Not many people think about this, but when people are in dire situations, they usually tend to make irrational decisions. Anna, who is the writer of this article, then brings in the topic of education with rapers. Because many people that go to festivals lack the education on drug usage, it's really important to mention it in the article. Anna does a very good job at doing this because many of these people don't realize the threats and consequences that they can go through because of these issues. Next. And it includes several different examples and facts that I find very interesting and that many other readers will too. One would be, Jones from the DPA says, when it comes to MDMA, the term overdose is often not even applicable. The most common cause of death related to MDMA is actually heat stroke. It gives you a great perspective and a better view on how the United States is taking care of these issues. Another important thing that the writer does is use self-standing quotes. In two parts of the article, the writer chooses to put two quotes by themselves in between paragraphs to put great emphasis on them and repeats them constantly to assure that the reader knows that it's important. One of the last great things that the writer does is use humor. Towards the end of the article, the writer chooses to include a quote which says, I often call the rave act the Kaiser Soze of laws. Everyone's afraid of it, but no one can recall any times it was actually used. 
By using this quote, the writer is giving the article a sort of humorous tone wrapped around this very important topic. Even though the writer did an amazing job writing about this topic, there were a few things that she lacked. One of the biggest things that the article lacks is detail. I feel like in this article, the writer was relying too much on the hyperlinks to do the work for her of adding detail to her writing. Because of this, it seems like the writer is leaving information out on purpose or simply just doesn't have it. One of the last issues that this article has is that because of the fact that it was written over two years ago, some of the hyperlinks are outdated. You could see that it redirects you to an article that doesn't exist anymore, making it seem as if the writer is not very credible. Even though it's directed towards such a large audience, it's typically targeted towards teenagers and kids in their early 20s. Overall, the article did an amazing job addressing the issue that the U.S. has when it comes to drug taboos as a whole, specifically in music festivals, even though it lacked a few minor details. With its use of logos, pathos, and ethos, it was really able to persuade and educate the targeted audience efficiently.